Annette wakes up, actually. Or, rather, calms herself long enough for... This. You, you seem to remember a great degree of confusion. Understandable. But... As she stands, a, as she kind of gathers her thoughts, and as she, you see just a rush of kind of motion and clear signs of just like, she's awake, and she is like, hasty to move. She has a lot of restless energy. Don't be too quick to move in that. You've been through a lot. Yeah, right until I grab you some water, tea, coffee. Gin? I'll take the gin. Fair enough. Let me check my bag, actually. I might have some. As I... you check the bag, yeah, I'll say there's a, there's a, there's a very, there's maybe quarter bottle left. Ah, perfect. You'll pull out two glasses. Good, 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 good. Here you are. To getting better and not getting mind fucked. She, she she gives a cheers to that, just kind of the clink and silence. You're you're seeing a lot of the Kezia vibes in her right now. You're starting to see where Kezia may be learned from or imprinted on. But she down she downs the drink in pretty much one. Oh my. Uh, do you need a refill? No, I need my wits about me. Is it Byron or is it Ken? I'm quite sorry, that point confuses me still. It confuses me as well. That's I'll not a good answer. I... I'm going to go with Byron for my sake. Fair enough. Byron, you saw me last night, and you were the one who threatened me to get along with Kiki, to be perfectly honest, so I know you have her interests at say at heart. How... What was with me yesterday? Kezia and I have a very weird relationship, I think you've picked up on, so... Her seeing me, her saying that I was at that me or that she was at that meeting, all of it is strange. All of that is weird. We have too much stuff that complicates everything. But wh how was I yesterday? Do you remember what I was saying? I'll be honest, I wasn't there for that. I only caught the tail end as uh, Zeka was dispelling the magic on you. Did you see anything there? Things are starting to come back together now, but they're still hazy. I, I remember the meeting that she was describing. The details blur at different points. It's like... It's like... It's like walking through fog at times. And then, when I'm with here last night... Again, fog. Coming here clear, clear as glass. Uh, talking, talking though. It's like just... It's nonsense. It's utter nonsense, and I can't parse it. Is it almost like falling into a pit within yourself and you're just kind of watching it kind of from a distance? Almost, yeah. You know almost what's happening, but you can't quite piece the details out, but you're living it. I... Ken, um, I'm Byron, whichever one. How? How? Where do you all know this? I, I asked about this the other day, and he's... Agron is finding these weird things. And whatever it is, this is related to that, because nothing like this has happened before. Nothing. Nothing even close. So whatever it is, it's that. But what is it? How do you all know about it? What the fuck are these things? What is it? What is in my head when he did that? How much information do you want? What do I need? That is all. You... That is all. I don't need. I don't need the silly metaphors. I don't need the hero's journey. I need to know the facts of how does this fuck with me, and how does this fuck with Kezia, and how can I fuck with him using it. You see, like, cold eyes right now. Well, there's a lot to it. And there's a lot to it that, even at this point, even though I personally was deeply involved, 
that none of us really know. The key things is that there are two entities. There's the Dawn Dragon and the Dusk Dragon. The thing that you've been dealing with is the Dawn Dragon. It's all about creating absolute order, removing free will, and controlling people. From what I can tell, it's the Dawn Dragon that, well, the Archon is kind of getting messed around with. We've encountered beings of some sort that seem to worship it. And they had similar technology to, I think, the things, from what has been explained to me, that the Orcarons after. Now, of course, the part of the story that I know better is the Dusk Dragon. It's the original source of, well, my power. And I'll kind of reach over and I'll grab the, uh, the ploy thing. The Heart of Darkness. I'll just kind of show it to her and just be like, and well, it is the source of my power. It's also what gave Joro his power. It's a being of absolute chaos. That drunk bastard is, has that shit? What? I don't think he fully understands all of it, but there's there's a lot going on here. If you're wanting to go against the Orcaron and the Dawn Dragon... If I'm going to be fully honest, your best course of action, and he'll kind of do like the little pop, pop the pearl up into the air, catch it, and be like, well, it would be to side with the Dusk Dragon. But I can tell you from personal experience, you don't want to do that. So what I'd recommend is that you just make your distance, figure out a plan, and hope that it will work out. Come together with some people, sort of like us, and we'll know work to find a solution it's a nice thing about having friends working in the group you can always rely on them she just kind of looks at you with just like almost like not disgust but like are you like like this kind of look of like are you really adding the goddamn lesson (laughs) you know you're not gonna like me saying this but that look on your face it reminds me a lot of all the times that we talk about being a party with Kezia. Oh my fucking reason. god, you really are continuing this. I know, I know, you guys have history, and I'm not here to try to solve it. I've done enough with that. Listen, That's listen, listen. There is some weird shit with me and Kezia, okay? I will, but I will back her. I will. In a pinch. I've done it before, and while she really grinds my gears and has... And she has fucked things up for us. The us of that part just tried to... Did something with my mind. So you know what? Maybe that's for the best that she fucked that up. Maybe the new us is going to be a lot of me fucking him over. Maybe you guys, you know, catch wind of it, hear things. I... I am not a good talk, good at speaking. I'm going to be honest. Um, mm. It's all right. L- listen, listen, I'm... listen. You helped break the ice with me and Kezia, even though that was pretty fucked up way of doing it, with the whole threatening me. I, I really... But you know what? We're going to move past that part because it at least got us talking again. Got us to listen to each other. So I don't, I'm not going to thank you for it, because again, you tried to threaten my life and my health with it. But I do want you to understand, I appreciate the end result. I understand. The ends don't always justify the means. Although if it makes you feel any better, I can't do those means anymore. You could, but never mind. Anyway, so here is what, here is what I'm currently at. Dawn Dragon, Dust Dragon... That stuff is all very high concept. What I understand is the Archeron is here and has some weird magic thing that he is using to f- that he used to fuck with my head, and I now and now I can see he was trying to fuck with Kezia's, and if I'm being honest, probably is gonna try to fuck with all of yours. So, 
what I can do is fuck with people who just tried to pull some stuff on me. And she points just at her head. I can b provide my own special brand of fuckery. I know his. I know where he keeps his special toys. Maybe I can grab a handful. Maybe I can just t point people in the direction of where they are. I haven't fully decided yet. But what I do know is this. I'm getting the hell out of town in the next few days until I at least figure out a plan that involves him not getting into my head. But I do owe you all a, li a small favor for um, breaking me free of that sort of thing. So, how do you think I can he help you a little bit before I go? Hmm. How can you help? Let I'm not going there. to fuck with him directly because I still need a plan for that. But I can do little things here and there, potentially, if it, if they don't expose me too much. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I think before you really try to fuck with them, you should group up with some people. You don't want to take on things like, you know, what, what he's able to do to you by yourself. You want people that are able to, you know, break you free. But I'm really not a people person. Neither is Kezia. And she had someone that isn't even able to summon black holes anymore, you know, threaten her sister's life to reforge their bond. Do you consider that a good thing? Is that a mark of a, of a functional relationship? It's a mark of a caring relationship. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I'll put it to you this way. My original plan was to, you know, you know, maybe try to flirt with you, be kind, be, you know, you know, seductive. But Kezia said no. And I went, all right, backing off. What I'm going to do instead, because very clearly, your guys' relationship is unhealthy, but she doesn't want it to be that way. I'll do my best to make sure that you two actually do, you know, reform a bond, because that's important. And I want Kezia to be able to experience having a family. And you're the closest thing she's got. So I made sure, in a, I'll happily admit, shitty way, ensure that the first step towards that family was made. And can you really blame me for that? No, I guess I can't. But I really do have to critique your method. Oh, no, I... I've gotten so used to using the threatening method just from, you know, my past work. Like, like, to... like Ken, Byron, whichever one it is. Like, if you need to do, like, a Ken is the nice one, Byron is the tough one, that that's a fine way to, to approach it. But, like, if you're trying to build a relationship, I'll admit, I'm no expert on it. But if you open with threats it's not going to set that off on a very good tangent. For instance, I actually was maybe interested in you, and then you threatened me. Fuck! All right. Agreed. I'm going to try to stop being threatening. I, I'm new to this barb thing, and I'm much better at talking now than I used to be. And I need to remember that threats aren't the only way. Can we agree on that? Yeah, no, I, no. Yeah, that's a lot of well, promises on your part. I can absolutely agree to that. And you know what? How's this? I'll stop making threats like this if you promise to at least attempt to make friends. I say that's a pretty good deal. Make a persuasion check. Well, that's a minimum of 20. All right, and we're going to roll... A, she's going to roll to resist her urge to make friends. <laughs> Or to roll, a, I guess it would be to roll to maintain her lone wolf status. Come on. <sighs> Alright. But, one additional thing on top of this. If right. Kezia actually manages to make a friend, an honest-to-god friend, and it isn't this kind of 
kind of tense the lingo between the two of you that kind of seems perpetual, you have got to let me know. Because I, I truly would be blown away if that happened. Barnum's kind of look up, think of the mark on Kezia's hand, be like, hmm. wonder if that has anything to do with it. I should check in with her about that. Well, I can assure you, you will make a friend, at least by the end of this. And it won't even be me. Actually, I'm pretty sure she's... No, flatly, she's already friends with us. What am I saying? You've seen Kezia have friends. I, I, I honestly, with her, it's very difficult. She may be seeing you all as, like, like teammates and, like, close acquaintances, but it might still be a work thing. I know she likes the kid with the goat legs, but that's kind of a weird dynamic to say that my only friend is someone, like, ten years younger than me who's still going through puberty. Like, you under, you see where I'm coming from with this? It's like, you can be on good terms with people, but they may not necessarily be your friends, right? Well, I mean, she's been willing to put her life on the line for all of us. Would you do that for just a teammate? Yes. Man, you guys have really intense teams. I mean, it's a team. Generally, if it, it's to, to a point that you said earlier, if I'm in this... And I don't have someone to back me up, then I die. It is as so, much about getting myself out alive as it is getting them out. I suppose. Like, all I, the teams like, like if your question was, that. "Am I willing to die for them?" No, but am I willing to put my life on the line for them? Yes. Oh no, Kezia, I think is more than willing to die for any of us. At least I'd like to think so. Well. I guess we'll see. Starwipe. Annette goes about and does her things. Before she goes, Byron's going to press the digitate a little part of hair on the back of her head just to see what the fuck her actual natural hair color is. Oh, it's like just a it's just a dark brown. Before you go, Annette, I just wanted to say Yeah. No, it's not about making friends. Just wanted to say. I think your natural hair color is beautiful. And I think you should leave it that way. But, obviously, that's up to you. Her eyes bulge as you walk away, like, what the fuck? Oh, and if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm always here. Well, not always here. You understand. Have a good one. So long, Ken. We'll see if we meet up again. Oh, wait, one, one, one more thing. Oh Violet or violence? 